Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to keep your framing consistent across multiple imaging nights and also across Meridian flips. Uh, so one of the questions that I got a while back was like, my, the, like after uh, a Meridian flip, the centering, the framing of my object is very far away from the original framing that I had. What can I do about this? And the good news is there are many things that you can do about this. But basically, just to show you a bit what, what is experienced, like uh, you can see this would be the ideal framing for my, for my frame. But I see that when I start my sequence, maybe it will be framed uh, like this, completely to the right. Uh, so losing some pixels on the, on the right, anything beyond, beyond that yellow line here. And then after my meridian flip, the framing will be like completely to the left. And then I lose some pixels on the left as well. And this is all uh, not uh, very good. So what determines uh, this? And what determines this is the tolerance that is applied to the mechanism that does the framing for your target. And that is plate solving. So I've introduced plate solving in another video. If you don't use plate solving and you have a go-to mount, use plate solving, it's awesome. So it, it basically will just like automatically slew your telescope to the target, take a picture there, determine where it is and how far it is exactly from the framing that you are desiring, and then tell the, the telescope to be a bit more precise to slew exactly there, take another exposure, check that, it will center everything automatically. It's awesome. And because it can be done in an automated fashion, it can run at the start of your session, it can run the following day based on the coordinates that you were using the previous night, it can run after a, mer a meridian flip. Uh, it's, it's just an amazing feature. The thing is, uh, there is a limit to the precision of the mount and also of the measuring equipment, i.e. your sensor. And, um, also seeing and stuff like that. Uh, so that means that you cannot do the plate solving with infinite perfect accuracy. You have to have a tolerance level. And this tolerance, if I look at uh, Nina and you go into the plate solving uh, parameters, you have the pointing tolerance here, which really determines how close to center you want the image to be. If you have a rotator as well, you have a rotation tolerance. I'm not going to get into that today. It makes things a bit more complicated. Uh, so I'll just talk about the pointing tolerance uh, today. If you're using uh, Sequence Gener Generator Pro, for instance, that pointing tolerance is expressed in pixels for your camera, as far as I remember. In Nina, it's expressed in arc minutes, which is like a, an angle in the sky. And if you move that angle, it's, it's the distance in arc minutes. Uh, one arc minute is a 60th of an arc degree. One arc second is a 60th of an arc minute. Uh, it can get uh, confusing pretty quickly. <laughs> but anyway, we have the pointing tolerance here in arc minutes. And this is what will determine um, how well the plate solving can center your image. One thing that is important to understand too about this tolerance is that the tolerance itself, this one arc minute, really means that in the worst case scenario, I will have to, to lose pixels on each side of my sensor equal to that tolerance. So if I, I, I could lose one arc minute to the left, one arc minute to the right, one arc minute to the top, one arc minute to the bottom. Uh, and just to clarify exactly what this means, I am going to use the power of the most advanced drawing tool known to humankind, Microsoft Paint. Let's get in there. So I am in Microsoft's, Microsoft Paint, and let's say that I have a square sensor. So let's say I'm using my uh, ZW ASI 533MC Pro, how I love those naming conventions. And it is a square sensor that is uh, pictured here. Uh, and the center of the sensor roughly, it's, it's Microsoft Paint, right? The, the, the most advanced drawing program known to man. Um, 
we have it roughly the center here. And so this is really where I want to center my target at. And this is what my plate solving will aim to put the target to, right? But there is a tolerance and we can express that tolerance by a circle or actually a disc that is around that ideal center of the frame. So with the tolerance, and the tolerance is actually the radius of that disc, it means that I can be a certain number of arc minutes or a certain number of pixels um, away from the, uh, the expected center, which means that the, the actual framing could put the, your target within any point on that disc which means that worst case scenario, it could put the, uh, the center of your frame, really the center of your target here at the very top of the disc or at the very bottom of the disc or at the very left of the disc or at the very right of the disc. So if it puts it at the very top of the disc, like let's say you, imag you, you imaged an object for two nights in a row with two meridian flips, that means that there are four plate solving operations, one at the start of each sequence and one after each meridian flip. Uh, the first sequence, uh, the first uh, plate solving uh, puts the center of your target, your target exactly here at the top of the disc, kind of worst case scenario. So that means that I have to sacrifice like all of the there are pixels at the top of my, of my image that will need to be sacrificed when I stack the pictures at the end. I will have to sacrifice an amount at the top of the sensor that is equal to the radius of my circle here, of my disk here, which is the tolerance. So I have to sacrifice this. And then after the meridian flip, let's say it does the exact opposite, again, worst case scenario, it will put the center of my target, my, my target at the bottom of my disk. So now I will have to sacrifice the bottom. And then after each meridian flip, let's say so it goes all the way to the left, all the way to the right, which means that in the end, I'm sacrificing lots of the area of my sensor. And after I have stacked all of my exposures, um, assuming no dithering and nothing went wrong with the tracking and all this kind of stuff. So I'm ass assuming perfect tracking then my cropping will uh, basically restrict the useful area uh, of, my, of what I captured to this new uh, square here. The area of my sensor is, uh, which is square sensor, if uh, my, uh, my sensor um, dimension is x on each side, it's x squared. Uh, and if my, my tolerance is T, I might end up in the worst case scenario with a cropped image whose size is X minus two times T squared, all of that squared. So I'm losing a lot of surface area. So what does that mean exactly for me, right? So let's say, so I'm using Nina. I have my pointing tolerance of one arc minutes and I'm using Nina with my 533 MC Pro camera attached to my R200SS Newtonian telescope without any reducer, let's say. So first I need to translate those arc minutes to pixels because I want to, to see what that means in terms of pixels, something that I can actually measure easily on the sensor of the camera. So for that, you need to determine how many arc seconds you have per pixel for uh, your, your current setup. So that's the resolution really of your, of your setup. So for that, I would typically go to, uh, to astronomy tools, uh, field of view calculator. I put in my telescope, I put in my camera and you can see that I have a resolution of 0 0.97 arc seconds per pixel and we have 60 arc seconds within one arc minute. So expressed in pixels, my tolerance is effectively 60 divided by 0 0.97, which is roughly 62 pixels. So that's my tolerance. This is the amount that I may have to crop on each side of the, uh, of the sensor. And really what that means is that I could end up with if I do um, a calculation where I know that my sensor has 3,008 pixels uh, for both, um, both dimensions. So I'm ending, I'm ending up with uh, 3,008 
squared as the total number of pixels. But with the tolerance there, I need to remove 2 times 62. And if I divide the, uh, my total sensor, uh, if I divide my cropped area by the total sensor area, I see that with those settings, I could be uh, basically sacrificing around like 8% uh, yeah, 8 let's say of the, uh, of the total sensor area that I have and ending up with 92% uh, or so of the total sensor area, which is fine, which is good for me. But you really need to think that the tolerance number that you, uh, you put in the plate solving um, uh, parameter for, uh, for tolerance is super important. And it, it kind of needs to be multiplied by two because it means that your image could shift left by that amount and the next point and the next time it could shift, shift right by that amount. So the, the total, total distance that you, you might have between those two frames is not 62 pixels for me, it's 124 pixels, right? So this is something that you need to kind of remember. I'm sure that a lot of you are very much aware of that, but it's true that for someone who's beginning in astrophotography, photography, it can be like something that's quite uh, confusing. So think about it when you set this pointing tolerance parameter. And there's more, <laughs> because wait, there's more. Um, there's a reason why Sequence Gener Generator Pro uh, expresses this pointing tolerance in pixels. It's because it's very easy to compare that to your actual sensor and see how much you can have movement in pixels between uh, a frame taken before a plate solving, uh, let's say a frame taken after an initial plate solving and a frame taken uh, after a second plate solving. Um, but one of the reasons that it's in ArcMIS in uh, Nina is because you know more or less the precision of your mount in arc minutes. Because if you have a very low grade mount, let's say you're using the, uh, the Skywatcher AZ GTI or GTE mount as a go-to equatorial mount, it's not super precise. If you put a tolerance of let's say like 0.1 arc minutes because you want to be super precise, um, then uh, maybe your mount will never manage to center your target with that precision. Um, and then the plate solving would run, uh, would keep running and running and running and running and running, trying to achieve that amount of precision and would never end. Uh, similarly, let's say you're more reasonable. You have like a better mount and you put a uh, 0.5 arc minutes as the pointing tolerance. But it could be that your mount is still like low grade enough that it will take it like three or four attempts before it can uh, achieve that tolerance. And that could be meaning like a few minutes of lost imaging time, especially near Meridian. That's a bit painful because Meridian is really the time where you can get the best uh, signal to noise ratio for your target, especially in light polluted areas. So it's always something to think about. And I know this is a fairly like, you know, well-known topic, but I hope that this video still helped a few of you. And uh, with that, that's pretty much what I wanted to, um, to discuss today. So um, as always, if you find it useful, uh, please leave a like down below. You can consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell. Uh, and also leave a comment if you have any, uh, any comments, if I made a mistake or anything like that. If I made a mistake, I'll typically be pinning uh, comments uh, that, uh, that basically uh, tell me what mistakes are made so that you can check uh, under the video for that. And uh, with that, uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.